Hey everyone, welcome back to Waste of Paycheck Garage. So I got a little bit of progress. I finished this piece here for the um, number four. Had to do a little clearancing for the intake manifold. Was hoping I could get away from that, but it, it uh, was just a little too close for comfort. And uh, I took a hole saw and opened all these up, one and three quarter, and then I'm going to take a die grinder and open it up the rest of the way. Not quite to the Sharpie line. I have to leave probably about the thickness of that pipe, just because this is the outside of the pipe. So I'll leave a, the thickness of that pipe for that to sit on, just so I don't get any overhang. But still something for it to sit on, something to weld to. So I'll take the die grinder and contour these out to the right shape and size. And then I'll put all of my uh, primaries back in, tack them all in place, double check everything one last time in the truck, and then the whole thing can get, I'll, uh, I'll bolt this up tight to this head. I'm gonna put a bolt in every one of these holes just so that this flange can't move. And it's already, uh, you can see it's not sitting perfectly tight to the head, and I don't wanna weld it solid and then find out that it's warped and then uh, have a bad seal to the head. Even though I am using a Remflex gasket, which are very, very, very forgiving, um, I still want it to be as flat as possible, obviously, uh, just to give me the best chance that I have it at getting a good seal. Well, this was last night's progress. I got everything fitted up and tacked into place, and I started, uh, started to weld all my joints. I did little sections on each one. I'm trying to skip around to keep it from warping too much and keep the heat from really... Uh, building up and making things move around. I'll be the first to admit, the welds, not great. I got not very far, and then I ran out of wire. So I gotta get some more wire today, and maybe I'll uh, get some more welding done tonight. Well, here's the progress so far. I don't have it fully welded. It's uh, getting pretty warm. I think I'm going to let it cool down for a while just so it doesn't get too ridiculously hot and start to warp on me. It's coming out okay. I think it'll hold. Um, could also break in half the first time I use it. So we'll see, I guess. All right, guys, don't go too hard on my welds. It's all welded up. It may or may not survive. But, not bad for some hillbilly in a pole barn, right? Last thing to do is to put it in the truck and get the uh, exhaust fabricated down to the J-pipe. And then all that's left to do is fire it up and hear it run. Well, you guys, it's been a long, long time since I've had this pipe out. And uh, what I gotta do is cut this off below this weld. This is the three bolt flange that's on the bottom of the HD manifold. But this is the header in the truck. Pretty close, but we have clearance. Now I have to make that line up with my J-pipe. And then we can hear it run. Alright, so I got the header fully done. And right now I'm putting it back in I'm putting it in the truck with the new intake manifold. This is what the header looks like underneath. I'm sorry I didn't film the process, but um, this is what I ended up coming up with. I had to come up, make some homemade pie cuts and stuff to make it all line up. But um, that's what we ended up with. And theoretically, I should be able to take that V-band off and weld one right on there. And I should be able to put that piece right back in there and put the HD manifold on without doing any fabricating or modifications. That's the idea anyway, just in case does break in half or if I don't like it or for whatever reason I should be able to go back to the HT manifold without too much trouble but it is done it's in there this is what it's going to look like this is my new carb spacer it's two inch it's a four hole to the single hole for the square bore in the Clifford um, one problem though is this plate is 90 degrees off and the holes don't line up if I turn it 
So I am going to have to do some machine work to that aluminum plate to get that to turn. And then I'm going to have to make my own gasket for that. And then I can put it back together. All right, so I've got the intake manifold back out because I have to take it to the farm and machine the adapter for the sniper so that it can rotate 90 degrees because right now it's not the right direction. So this is what the header looks like all finished up. I had to do get a little creative. I ran out of pie cuts, so I actually made my own. I turned the bandsaw a little bit, put a straight pipe in there, cut it at an angle, flipped it 90 or 180 degrees, slid it out, cut it again. I didn't actually measure, I just kind of guesstimated. And I made a couple little pie cuts to throw in there and they ended up being really close. And um, it bolts up pretty good, fits up pretty good. Not too complicated. I like how I didn't have to jog it backwards like I did on the HD manifold because it was right in line with cylinder number four. Whereas in this one, I'm in between cylinder four and five. So I was able to come straight down with it instead of back at an angle like this one was. But this is what it looks like. I'm gonna throw this back in the truck and then I gotta work on the intake manifold getting the the adapter for the four barrel turn 90 degrees so that my throttle and the fuel line ports and everything will be in the right place. And then uh, I can put it all back together and hear how it sounds. The only thing I am concerned with is that my new spacer for the sniper is two inch instead of one inch. So I'm hoping that this thing here will fit. Otherwise I'm gonna have to have a longer boot or something. Um, We'll burn that bridge when we get to it. All right, you guys, so I'm at the farm doing a little bit of work to my uh, new intake. The problem with this intake I got is that the only way that this adapter would have fit was this way where that orange line is, and that would have mounted my sniper 90 degrees off from where it's been for the last four years, three or four years. Um, so what I want to do is rotate this 90 degrees and the problem with that is none of the bolt holes lined up. So what I did was I just made up a little thing that went on the bottom side so that I could chuck it in the middle over there. And what I ended up doing was elongating these holes because these two were able to line up, but these two were way off. So I got my mark here, line it up, drop it down there. So now these two holes line up and now these two also line up. That's where the hole used to be. That's where the hole used to be. And then um, because these heads aren't very big on these and that's a pretty big slot, it's the same size hole as that, but I don't want to elongate it so you have less clamping surface. So I took these 5 sixteenths flat washers and ground them flat and now I can drop these down in there. And the hole lines up. That one has to be flipped because I actually rounded it. But anyway, the hole will line up. And I maintain the same amount of clamping surface. And I did already check that the head um, will not protrude past the surface. So I don't have to do any clearancing on that or anything. But that's my solution. Um, so that I can get my sniper back to the orientation that it was. And then I won't have to change my throttle linkage or my fuel lines or anything like that. Everything will just bolt back the way it was. And then uh, the last thing I have to do is, I don't know if you can tell, but when I line these holes up, there's a little bit of a ridge here and a little bit of a ridge here. And I'm just gonna take the, uh, probably the, the grinder with a flap disc or even just a die grinder with a burr in it. And I'm gonna take this and mark it on this edge so that I know where it is. Yeah, I know it moved. And then I'll do the same thing over here. And I'll just polish that a little bit just to help with flow and, you know, just clean things up a little bit. Don't wanna cut any corners. So I got those edges smoothed out. So they should flow pretty good now. At least better than the edge that was there. 
Now the last thing I have to do is make my own gasket for this because it did not come with one. So I'll work on that and then I should be go good to head home and slap this thing back together. So I'll go over here, pick out some gasket material. This stuff looks like it'd be pretty good. Um, just a thin paper like gasket. I think that's all we need. And then uh, I'll cut a piece. Looks like this piece right here will actually work pretty good. Lay it on there, cut it, get it close, and then I'll take a hammer, tap all around this edge to get this hole punched out, tap on the bolt holes, get the holes punched out for that, and then I'll be pretty much it. So I did just like I said, took this piece, laid it on there, and then I uh, took this hammer, tapped it in the holes, tapped it all the way around the outside, and then I took it and tapped it around the inside edge. And then your pieces just come off just like this. And just like that, you got a new gasket. All right, well, I got it all put back together. Got my new spacer and everything in there. There's pretty much the only issue. Um, so I'll have to come up with a solution for that. And then I'm also a little concerned about this maybe hitting the hood. I don't know. We'll see. Um, there's nothing really stopping me from firing it up. I'm just a little nervous. I don't know why. Um, it's probably going to sound and run exactly the same. So I guess all that stuff to do is just fire it up. I think I'll prime the fuel pump a few times since the, uh, I had the both fuel lines off. They probably emptied themselves. One more. Make sure the cutout's open. I want to hear what it sounds like. 